So just like yesterday, what I'm going to try and focus on is you getting your hands on this skill and being confident in doing them. So this set of steps is actually really, really simple. In fact, really, there's only one thing that you need to do, but this is just trying to break it down a little bit for you, okay? So if you're given a quadratic equation like this, we could represent it with a graph. You've looked at some of this before, but two reasons why we're looking at this again. Number one, we're going to increase the complexity of the quadratic equations you're going to graph. And secondly, I'm going to talk about a few things that we haven't seen before with relation to quadratics. So in order to get there, we want to review what it looks like beforehand. Okay? So step one, and this really is the main step, have a look at this and find your intercepts. There are two kinds. What are they? X and Y. How do you find X intercepts? What do you let? You let Y equal zero. And if you want to find y-intercepts, you let x equal 0. So it's a bit funny that those are backwards. But we can do both of these and find out where our graph intersects with the axes. So let's do that really quickly. Let's find the intercepts. So for x-intercepts, I'm going to let y equal 0, which gives me what? This equation up here, the left-hand side just becomes 0. That's it. Now, in order to actually get something meaningful out of this, we then have to use all the skills we've been demonstrating with factorizing these quadratics and so on, and finding solutions. This is what you're doing in questions two and three of the review. Um, I notice it's a little bit awkward having all these negative signs around, especially at the front. So I'm actually going to multiply everything by negative one. What happens when you multiply zero by negative one? Still just zero, right? But then all of these guys, all of the signs change. So I get 2x squared there. I get plus 3x. And then I get a minus 9. OK, can we factorize this? A pair of numbers that adds to 3 multiplies to negative 18. Can you think of the pair of numbers? Negative 3 and positive 6. That'll do the job, won't it? 2x squared, uh, we said negative 3 and positive 6. So I've broken it apart. Now I'm going to pair things up. Okay, so let's have a look here. What's the common factor between these two? It's just x. That's it. So I'll take that out and then I'll write what's left behind. Have a look at the next pair. What's the common factor? 3. So I take that out. And then I see what's left behind, which, because I did things right, we did things right, you gave me the right pair of numbers, it lines up. That looks good. So now, my final line, 0 equals this. OK. Now, this is why it's so helpful to write something like this up the front. You've gone all through this mental effort to write all this down. You're like, why did I do that again? And the answer was, you're looking for x-intercepts. You'll get one here and one here. What do you get from the first one? Negative 3. That's one of your x-intercepts. And look carefully. Positive 3 over 2 should do it, right? Because the 2's will cancel, leave you 3 minus 3. That looks good. So 3 over 2. Okay. So just keep that in your hat. x equals that. x equals that. Those are your x-intercepts. Right. Let's find the y-intercept. It's actually a lot easier. y-intercept. To find that, as you told me before, I'm going to let x equal 0. OK. So I can put x equal 0 into any of these spots. Whoops. Which, sorry, any of these spots here. So which is the most appropriate one? I think the very first line would work, right? Because you get y equals, what's this become when x is 0? What's this become when x is 0? 0. And you just get left with the 9. Okay. In fact, just as a side note, you don't have to write this down, but you know when we wrote in straight lines that y equals mx plus b? Do you remember what the b was? The m is the gradient, but the b is just the y-intercept. It's just that number. Well, here, this guy here, that's the y-intercept. Everything else just vanishes. Okay. So therefore y equals 9, that's my y-intercept. Okay. 
Now draw for me, because we're about to plot, this is step two, draw for me a Cartesian plane. But just think for a second, don't just draw it randomly, think about the numbers you're going to have there, right? See how I'm going to have um, a negative value and a positive value for x, so I need the whole thing. This 9 is quite high, so I want to make sure that it goes high up enough. Okay, so I'm going to draw something like this. Okay, one step at a time. My x-intercepts, negative 3 and positive 3 on 2. So I'm going to put a decent scale on here. Let's make that 1, 2, 3. So let's call that guy negative 3. And I put a big fat dot to indicate. I'm going to go through there. Uh, if that was 1, 2, 3, then 1, 2, 3. 3 on 2 is right in there halfway. So I'm going to label that as 3 on 2. Um, I need to go up to 9 for my y value. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Mm, that's too small, so I'm going to go double. Two, three, four, five, nine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There we go. Remember, your x and your y axes don't have to have the same scale as each other's, so long as they're the same on, the, on their own axis, right? So this x here, 3 over there has to be the same as 3 over here. But this guy I can make as tall or as short as I like. OK, fantastic. Now, I'm almost there. I want to plot these, and I know what kind of shape I'm going to get out of this. It's going to be a, have a look. Can you join the dots? You're going to get this up and down kind of figure, right? In fact, you can roughly now join the dots. And you should get something like that. Okay. Now, you may recall the place where that parabola turns around. See how it's going up and then it goes down. It has a special name. Does anyone remember it starts with a V? It's the vertex. Now, a question I have for you is, how did I know the vertex of the parabola was on this side and not on this side. How did I know that's where it would go up? How did I know that that wasn't the vertex, or that the vertex wasn't over here? Any suggestions? The vertex, it, say it again, I can be nice and loud and clear. OK, you're going to find the vertex right smack bang in the middle of the parabola. That's because it's on the axis of symmetry. Every parabola. is symmetrical. So in fact, if you have another color, I'd love you to draw a vertical, maybe dotted line, that goes right through the vertex, like this. So you can work out where your axis of symmetry is. For starters, you can work it out just by measuring. right? You can see where minus 3 is. You can see where 3 on 2 is. Just put it halfway between, and you will find the axis of symmetry. Okay. Now. Step three, this last part here. It says use more features if necessary. This is why. You know how we got uh, solutions out of this, right? How many solutions did we get? You got, yeah, you got two for the x's and then you got one for the y. Okay? You always get a y-intercept. This is a bit interesting. You always get one of these. But you don't always get x-intercepts. You don't always get solutions to this. Okay, That's tricky. Um, sometimes you don't get any x-intercepts. Or sometimes you just get one, or sometimes you get two. So if you don't get one of those, or any of those, you don't have enough information. So you have to use more features, you have to plot more points, you have to choose other values, and then see where does this shape trace through. Um, we're going to talk in the next exercise, 1107, about how to find the axis of symmetry when you're like, I don't know where to look. We'll wait until the next time I go to teach you that. Okay?